Um, I have good news and bad news. Bad news is I don't have to talk about structural geology, but the good thing is I'm going to convert it into a way that I don't have to talk about boring structural geology. I think, why, why is it that determination of deposit scale structural architecture is so important? I think it's really important. But in order to show you how it's important, I made a little uh, bedtime story. So it's called the parable of the discovery channel. Far, far away, in a parallel universe, at an international conference, six mining consultants were having a drink. They were from South Africa, France, USA, New Zealand, Canada, and Australia. They were discussing this new monograph 30 that was released by those I met, when suddenly the door burst open. In rushed John Fan, a well respected mining professional, all breathless. Guys, I need your help, he shouted. Then John explained that his company, Anglo Asian, was in deep trouble. He then slapped the drawing down on the table. He said, I want you guys to analyze what is missing from the deposit using your technical expertise. We have a sample here, but that's all we know. We want to know the geometry, the orientation, and the size of this missing part of this deposit. Work it out as a team and present a solution to me tomorrow. Then John thanked everyone and rushed out of the room. South Africa looked at this. Great! This is an easy one. <laughs> the main directions of continuity are here. So we use bibliography to figure this out. So the solution is this. <laughs> Danny, 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 you're so old-fashioned. You've been doing this since the 1960s and you have no idea. There are multiple directions of continuity. As you can see here, I pointed out, and also here. So we need to use pluricassian simulation. <laughs> so the solution is yes. <laughs> They're married. Oh, come on. We're not back in the last century, huh? Well, in America, we use pattern recognition. We take the patterns from densely sampled areas like this, use it in less dense areas, and we call this multi point statistics. So the answer is this. <laughs> the New Zealand. Two words, said the Kiwi. Cane toad. <laughs> what? It's our new implicit modeling software. <laughs> Cane toad kills all other software, right? <laughs> you can't go wrong. <coughs> so the solution is thus. <laughs> Canadian. I do apologize for being Canadian. <laughs> But perhaps we can all get along and reach a compromise. <laughs> Probabilities. That's what it's all about. What are the variations? So, Danny, this is one possible variation, but sorry, that's the only one. Like this, with conditional simulation. And, and these, and these, and maybe all these. These are all probable, aren't they? Eh? <laughs> then, the Australian, who had missed all of this debate, because he was chatting up Betty at the Ozone and Booth, <laughs> takes a glance at the picture on the table and said, This is a human skeleton. Which means that there's only one answer. All other solutions are not only improbable, but impossible. So the solution is this. The five others were speechless. They stared at the Australian solution, stared at the Australian, they stared at each other, and they burst into uncontrollable laughter. <laughs> How ridiculous, spoke the French woman. The way to which get your education, not from the blood. Adelaide? <laughs> you <Yeah>, just right. <laughs> yeah, where did you get this idea from? asked the South African. The Australian took a swing from his beer and replied from the Discovery Channel. He continued I saw a program about human and had to meet last night on the Discovery Channel. That's the sort of Australian solution was unsophisticated, not technical enough, and not quantitative, and weird. They couldn't possibly charge enough for this simplistic model. After some deliberation, the other five professionals <coughs> chose to represent the Canadian one. They could charge it off for the simulation. And it was general enough to cover everyone's ass. But in this parallel universe, 
the general population had no idea what the human anatomy looked like. In this group, only the Australian knew. Because he watched the Discovery Channel. Everyone else was uninformed. So, what they saw effectively was not this, but this. The end. So, what are the takeaway lessons from this? Not knowing the first order anatomy of the deposit is the greatest risk for any mining company, I believe. That's my uh, interpretation. Everything else, such as modeling methodologies, is of secondary importance. Fancy maths or software will never cover your ignorance. And the answer is usually staring right underneath your nose. So, a more famous person said this. In general, analysis geology is worth a pound of geostatistics. This may be disappointing to geostatisticians with no geological background, but tough. I, I like, I'm half Japanese, I like to change things a bit. So I have a structural geology there. So, um, in, you know, Japanese people don't invent anything, they just change other people's ideas and then sell them for money. So, I'm, I'm, sorry, sorry. <laughs> So wouldn't it be nice if, if we could just glance at something, glance at the great data set, like I was shown in the parable, and be able to determine the structural style of any deposit, and the scale of the deposit. Now the 100 year old down plunge projection I talked in the paper, um, people were able to do this. They were doing it for quite a few years. If you Google that, down to plunge projection with mineralization, in Google you won't find anything. And I've actually referenced that in the paper if you didn't want to graph. X-ray plunge projection is able to do this for 3D asset data set. And I've been using it for nearly 12 years. And I've only told a few people. So it's not commonly known. Um, the diagram on the left are a schematic diagrams, the structural conditions that you can, and the downward direction is, is shown in the red arrow. And these are some of the examples on the right hand side. I won't get into detail because this is all outlined in the paper. But down plunge projection is basically this. Uh, a is a plan view, a geological map, and down plunge view is the B. If you get the down plunge view, you can construct D, which is the antiform, very easily. You can make sense of the data. The other bit that I take is maximum intensity projection. This is a methodology that was developed in 1989 uh, for the medical industry. Uh, in those days, the computing power was, wasn't that great, so in order to visualize 3D data, they projected it into in So basically, you just have an X-ray style uh, visualization method, but it's very simple. So it works like this. You have a cloud of data on one side, on the left-hand side, and you have these arrows pointing this way. On the, on the monitor, you see only the high grades. So, in practice, and this is how it works. This is looking at down, uh, this is the plan view of a, a deposit. Red is the ore, and blue is the waste. You turn on, well, this is looking towards the north, okay? And if you turn on the um, maximum intensity projection, it looks like this. It highlights all the high grades. So you can see through the volume, and it projects into 2D. So basically, all you have to do is rotate it until the patterns emerge. I'll do this. This is a training data set that I've developed, and everyone who I train can go through this process. Here you can see an S shape, which is the fold geometry here. And this is the X ray plunge projection view. So, the way I explain it in the uh, paper, and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to identify my paper because it's the only paper with a football field and a picture of a piano in it. So. Uh, so this is a sculpture, okay? This is a special sculpture where you can see a picture of a piano on the left-hand side. That's a reflection of that sculpture. So if you look at that sculpture from any other angle, it doesn't make any sense. So on the left-hand side, that's a picture that makes sense, okay? So the piano makes sense. It fits up with the uh, S-shaped geometry. And on the other side, on this right-hand side, that doesn't make a lot of sense. In actual fact, a lot of people who look at data, you look, look at them in plan view or in vertical sections, they just happen to be in the drill hole fence lines. 
that has no relationship to any structural geometry whatsoever. And they often look like on the left hand side. Right hand side, sorry. Right, so on the left hand side, this one here, that is the original control wireframe that I created in order to create this data. On the other side, on the right hand side, that is the wireframe that was created with leapfrog, but using the down plunge projection method. First, you have to actually look down plunge, and once you have that information, you can model this quite readily. So, this is another, this is a real data set. The other data set that I showed you was a fake data set that I've created. This is without the MIP, the maximum intensity projection. You turn that on, it looks like that. That looks like a typical double deposit. And this is the drill hole fence line. So this, in this orientation, you do traditional uh, interpretation. So I'm going to rotate that around again, just like the other one. Right. Here, you should be able to identify large, large folds, like that. Okay? Which is... I have an analog of that. Looks like that. So you have to imagine you should be able to see that. But you can only see it in this down plunge projection view. If you are looking at it at any other angle, you will never see it. If you're looking at it in section, you will never see it. This is the only view. You, you give or take five degrees either way, you will miss it. So this is something that you specifically look at, or I specifically look at, and I'm trying to people how to do this. So, although this talk is not about implicit modeling, I might comment on it because people do ask me this. Um, this, is a, this is the same data as the first data set that I showed you. This is the same data set with uh, generated leapfrog again. This is the shell. This is the same data set that I showed you with the X ray plunge projection analysis first. So, you be the judge. Is it reduce risk. Well, in that case, clearly not. Because you actually have no idea what you're dealing with. In this case, you do, because you figured out the patterns beforehand. That, and that is the key. You don't chat something in the software and then hope that gonna, something's going to come out. You have to actually look at the data, the raw data, and then figure it out beforehand. So my workflow is this. So you load the drill holes, you survey the assay data, do the X-ray plunge projection of the asset data points and interpret the results, and then model. Now, there are other workflows that have been developed. Load drill holes, model by interpolation, inter interpret the interpolated results, and then remodel again. This is highly inefficient. And in fact, you won't be able to get any sensible patterns out of that. You'd be drawing completely nonsensical patterns from that. But because I know the answer to this data set, because I created it, I know that this is, this is not the way to go. So good luck if you want to do that. So does implicit modeling reduce risks? No. Not without prior structural analysis using X-ray plunge projection or great data. Ignore the structural architecture and implicit modeling will increase risk. So how do we go about doing that? There are three steps involved. <coughs> Use the X-ray method to determine the plunge direction of grade data. And remember that there's only one view direction that makes sense. This is quite an important message. Okay? If you don't look in the right direction, you'll never see it. And also, it, this fits in with the concept of variography. The very, when you do variography, you use a have, the data has to be rectilinear. You can't be curving around or doing something fancy. Things you have to domain. Okay, so this actually goes along together with variography. I'm doing some experiments with that. You comprehend the patterns in terms of structural style. So, in order to do this, you do have to have experience. You just can't get away from that. You just can't be sitting at a computer and then expect to see the patterns because you won't. Like the parable. Okay. You won't see that skeleton. You need to have experience. 
you can't get away from that. So you either have to, you know, study or do extensive field work, ask questions. You have to uh, experience trachydology with real rocks. That's what you need to do. And then you choose the appropriate modeling method. I didn't. I made fun of those modeling methods, but you know, then you have an idea about what to use. So the key thing is number one, education. Get your education and. If you can't do that, you can always go to the Discovery Channel.